Plus. He is an assistant professor at Thapar Institute of Engineering and Technology in Patiala. He is an alumnus of NMCAD lab, having done his postdoctoral, doctor, and master's all from IISC. He, he has leadership level industrial experience with companies like Rolls Royce. Student teams led by him have won quite a few significant awards. His research and interests include machine learning for mechanical sciences, MRO diagnostics and prognostics, equipment slash structural health monitoring, applied mathematics, engineering optimization, structural dynamics, smart materials and structures, and helicopter engineering. Please be happy. Shall I start? Yes, please go ahead. Please. Right. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for a very humble introduction. Uh, again, uh, I would like to start with a sincere apologies because time is a extremely valuable asset. Um, in this context, so I'll, I'll try to. Uh, so, Professor, I have. I need to wind up before four, right? Four p.m. No, it's not very rigid. So, try to uh, complete what you would like to say. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. So, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. So uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, to this whole August intellectual audience, uh, it's indeed a pleasure. And uh, thanks to Professor Dinesh and uh, our other uh, collaborators, uh, to professors. And uh, certainly, I think uh, there, there is going to be a culmination. And we are look, all looking forward that uh, there can be a, a strong uh, collaboration with Delft as well as with Airbus. So some of the things which I'm going to show today in this presentation is uh, going to connect the dots from the past from my own PhD and postdoc work uh, in ISC. At the same time, I'm going to uh, link that with the upcoming work uh, and the ongoing research work which is going on um, along with uh, a couple of students uh, at the Institute. So, uh, so today uh, I'm going to deliver a talk, a brief understanding and my own thoughts on the analytical formulation of negative Poisson ratio structures and their in-plane moduli uh, for oxatic metamaterial structures. So we'll, we'll discuss about that, what are these, and what we see on the bottom left, this cartoon. Uh, this is an animation here. Uh, unlike the normal positive Poisson ratio structures, what we see here is the, the negative Poisson ratio uh, is, is at the play. So we are going to discuss that in detail, and certainly I'm going to extend that to many other engineering applications from my own experience of the industry, because I'll be keep on switching two hats. One would be academic research hat, as well as uh, one would be the industrial research and technology hat. All right, so uh, this is how I have planned the talk. So to begin with, um, I have heard the talks of uh, you know uh, other uh, August speakers and uh, I try to link and the first part of the presentation I'm going to dedicate on why wing morphing is required in helicopters or for that matter in fixed wings such as aircrafts. Uh, it can be MAV, UAVs or the the the, the, the full scale you know, A350s or A380s or alike. The second part of the presentation um, would be around the novel aerospace metamaterial structures. Uh, there I'll be focusing on the oxatic structures. And briefly, I'm going to touch upon on the industry in trust, in particularly the standpoint from Airbus and uh, the uh, other stakeholders, definitely the European Space Agency, the uh, NASA and a couple of other uh, defense agencies. Uh, so, and then part of the work, I'm going to discuss about the mathematical formulation. So two to three slides, I'm going to dedicate on that, that especially the what we know as Poisson ratio as a, the material property. And so now here it is getting going to be a function of the geometrical property. And then I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the 3D printed structures, the 2D structures uh, which we have developed. And I'm going to show you a demo rather than just showing the animations. Let's see that in the real life. And some of the works uh, which we have shown it to the different uh, ambassadors, uh, including the ambassador of uh, to Netherlands uh, from uh, Republic of India and to, to to Russia as well. So the third part of the presentation would be on the di its different applications, not only you know focusing on the aerospace, but uh, other opportunities which are the spin-off ideas which some of uh, the students are working. 
Uh, the last part of the presentation would be on the couple of other research works which are going on and which aligns with the, uh, you know, the meta material as well, uh, I'll, I'll, because it is part of the designing the new structures which can have the negative Poisson ratios which we can leverage. Um, the bonus for the students in, in particular would be one R&T research and technology opportunity. Uh, so there is some conference going on. Uh, it's upcoming conference in and the abstract I'm going to show that. So the, the opportunity I'm going to introduce to all the students. So please stay tuned. So let me start with a brief bio sketch of mine. Um, um, so I have done my bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering and uh, MS and PhD in aerospace engineering from IISC. Um, so I've done one professional certification uh, from uh, MIT and large part of my uh, experience is from the industry. So I started my career in John Deere. So why I'm mentioning this because a couple of my examples I'm going to when I'm going to switch the hat from academic research to the industrial research. So this is uh, these are the applications which are motivated by from the experience in the agricultural domain as well as from the Rolls Royce. So after my postdoc, first postdoc, I joined Rolls Royce Jet Engine Division, where I started working on uh, as a senior leadership role in the uh, research and technology CTO office division and uh, taking care of the AI uh, in the Indian division as well as in the Singapore division. So um, without any further ado, so uh, let's start with that. When we are talking about, I'll be talking uh, in, in this second part of the presentation, the oxatic airfoils in particular and its results, which we saw uh, in the first animation on the first slide. So why do we need, why there is a dear need of morphing the wings? What is the key benefit? So I'm going to relate that uh, part of the motivation problem from the work which we have done already in the IIC. And I'm very pleased to sh share here on this forum that uh, in 2015, um, so we extended this work in a, and then uh, you know, won uh, laurels for uh, the India after 24 years uh, from the Vertical Flight um, Foundation, so VFS. So here what you see on the left side is the world tower, full scale world tower test. And this yellow part is the trailing edge flap. So this is a, a simulated world tower facility in, in NASA where uh, the uh, effect of the smart helicopter trailing edge flaps would be investigated experimentally. So, so to what we are going to achieve with that, we are going to cancel out the loads which are going to be generated in the helicopter, especially we are going to cancel the loads at the hub itself. So we are going to discuss that a little bit detail so that you know why when we are going to choose and move to this area of oxatic airfoils, there should be there should be a proper rational that who is the stakeholder who is going to use this technology. So I'm going to touch upon a little bit on the dynamic post buckling, which has been designed uh, to achieve the the deflection of the trailing edge flaps and uh, some results from the optimization work. So now I'm going to switch quickly the hat of the academic uh, from the academic research to the industrial research and technology. So one question which always comes to my mind, and I believe uh, this is a question which every researcher uh, must be always pondering with to begin uh, the research. So that is that who is the stakeholder? OK, that's fine. I'm going. This is a fascinating technology. It is uh, very interesting to note, which is not largely available in the standard textbooks or reference books that uh, uh, because we know that the generally the Poisson ratio bounds are in the positive range 0 to 0.5. This is what generally we talk in the UG uh, courses. So when we are going to work on something which is have uh, which possess negative Poisson ratio, who is going to look into this technology? So uh, this is a very interesting finding. So Airbus itself have a keen interest in the oxatic airfoils, uh, they, they in fact they have a patent in 2006. So this is the small uh, snapshots from the same patent, and they call it mission adaptive wing. So, uh, and here what we see on the on the right side, this is the unit cells or the oxatic unit cells placed in a systematic fashion. 
so that ultimately at the skin surface, we are going to get the leverage, the negative Poisson ratio effect. And that's what uh, Airbus started working and um, they, they filed the patent uh, in 2004 and uh, got the patent in 2006. So when uh, these things are clear, so now the uh, next step is that, all right, let's uh, deeply investigate quickly uh, that uh, when we are going to deflect the airfoils, how much deflection is required, point number one, and then what are the immediate benefits we are going to leverage when we are going to have deflections, let's say on the helicopter trailing edge flaps. Let's understand, so for that, uh, here what you see is the Chinook 47D full scale helicopter, on the left side, uh, so CH-47D is lifting these two Hummers like toys. Now let's look into the without and behind flaps. Video of the same helicopter. This is a tandem rotor military cargo helicopter. What is going to happen to that because of the sheer vibrations? And please note the time. This is no scaling up of the time has been done here. Can anybody tell me how many seconds it took? Hello? So uh, this is just a fraction of a minute, right? So this particular point was the main area of motivation behind investigating the, the flap deflection and the morphing of the wings. It is not just for uh, the, the common UAVs and MAVs. It is going to solve a problem which is uh, extremely catastrophic. This is what you saw is the traditional ground resonance phenomena in helicopters. And definitely there are other uh, air resonance and a couple of other phenomena are there. But this one, uh, so let's try to attack it and, and understand that how many, how much loads are required so that we can start developing the, uh, uh, the auxatic airfoils, which can deliver us the level of deflection, which is exactly required to reduce the, the loads at the hub itself. Is there any question? Okay. So, so what you see here is that uh, you know this is the on the on the top right corner. This is the uh, Rudra helicopter, the uh, military version of the advanced light helicopter uh, manufactured by HAL Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Now, what we want to achieve is the the, the main rotor is the prime uh, prime source of vibrations. So we want to cancel out the vibrations at the source itself. So for that reason, we don't want that the vibration should pass to the fuselage and we want to cancel that. So one of the way, there are many methods in active vibration control technology. So one of the method is the active trailing edge flap. So that is what uh, is our investigation area. And here the focus is because this is a four um, helicopter, uh, four bladed helicopter uh, where the Omega is, uh, let's say 300 RPM. So it is equivalent to five hertz. So the four omega loads, that's what we know, uh, or the four per rev uh, loads are the key area of interest which we want to reduce. So this is the schematic of the flap which we want to uh, actuate. And the actuation mechanisms is what ultimately I'm going to very soon link it to uh, auxatic airfoils. So please stay tuned and let's appreciate the aerospace complexity into solving this problem. Uh, where Airbus is also interested, by the way. So these are the couple of properties of it. So here what you see, uh, let's have one small single trailing edge flap, and uh, this is the parametric analysis. And here what we are trying to calculate is the power required to actuate this flap and the vibration, how much vibration we can reduce if we are actuating the, you know, using the four per rev, three per rev, or five per rev individual flap deflections. And uh, on the bottom uh, right, what you see here is the flap deflection angles at different flap cords. And uh, on the bottom left, what you see is the percentage vibration reduction with the insertion of the fla flaps. So uh, the same results has been done for more complex and more realistic phenomena for dual trailing edge flaps. So I'm going to use these results, so that's why I'm going to show you. Uh, 
And here what you see is this is a consolidated plot of the single flap reflections on the left side and the dual trailing edge flap reflections. Uh, and uh, the bottom part shows the four per rev hub loads, as I said. So we want to cancel the vibrations at the hub itself and don't want it to pass it to the fuse latch. So here what you see the, the, the dark black, the bars are the baseline. It means there is no flap. When there is a flap and then we have these kind of uh, multi-harmonic control uh, in actuated the single trailing edge flap or the dual trailing edge flap, then we are able to reduce these loads, which are the white bars. And this is a massive reduction. And by the way, uh, certainly here centrifugal loads, uh, we need to uh, inculcate into work. So the literature shows that we can accommodate that uh, with a 50% of the margin. Otherwise, these results are actually coming from the um, helicopter aeroelastic analysis, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, developed by, uh, you know, so 40 plus PhD students and uh, my part of the work got inserted into that. Now to, uh, all right, we understand that we need to actuate the flap by how much degrees and this is the flap. Uh, we need to amplify its deflection because the centrifugal loads are going to play. So now let's see that how we are going to actuate the flap. This is the traditional comparison what is existing in the literature. So for that, to begin with, we created a CAD design. This is part of my PhD work. And uh, uh, then, so here I try to develop a novel uh, post buckling which is generally a failure phenomena, uh, largely uh, from a structural uh, perspective, when uh, because we want, want always a load should be below the Euler buckling load. Uh, on the contrary, we are uh, actually pushing the, the dynamic load um, in, the, in the compressive dynamic load in the post buckling regime, in the dynamic post buckling regime in particular, and we are able to get the deflections delta, which is the point of interest. Um, so here, this is the formulation to calculate the deflection as well as to ensure that we get a stable response because essentially all these uh, relations, uh, the, the buckling is an unstable, un, uh, unstable phenomena. And if we don't choose these parameters A, B, C, and D appropriately, the, the solution may sometime blow up. Here what you see is the appropriate parameter chosen so that uh, we only get a stable response. So. And uh, by the way, uh, this particular point is very uh, interesting and useful for aerospace uh, airfoil deflection research. This uh, expression W at the top represents the uh, deflection, which is the actual deflection. And how we are going to get this actual deflection, which is over here. So this we are going to get it using the smart, uh, you know, uh, piezoelectric stack actuator. So in this scenario, uh, so similarly, uh, there has been investigation using SMAs, shape memory alloy, and a couple of other equivalent smart materials. So in this investigation, we try to actuate the flap, the, the post buckling mechanism using the, uh, the APA. Uh, so this is the first prototype, and then we wanted to experimentally validate that. So uh, I created the CAD models and the experimental investigations has been done. And here you can see that uh, the we are able to get 12 degrees of deflection and what you see it over here is the uh, this is the three axis uh, uh, IMU unit so that we can get the vibration uh, and the all three degrees of freedom movement as well as the displacements. Now uh, when we took these uh, 12 degree and put a, a reference or uh, in inclusion of the centrifugal loads then, so these are the four per rev uh, loads because we were considering always the four bladed helicopter into the consideration. And you can see that there's a massive reduction in the loads. And this is possible when we are saying, uh, so this one is the traditional uh, plot with the normal hinge type of a mechanism. And this one is with the post buckling beam mechanism. Uh, although the FZ is not that small, but overall we are get, getting the reduction. So this is good. Um, so here you see a couple of uh, other concepts. So how to actuate the flaps in real. And this, this part has been presented in the ERF as well. And uh, this is the complete summary that to actuate those flaps. So how complex it is. 
So this is the, the key idea why we started investigating the oxatic airfoils. Look at the different mechanisms by uh, different universities. And uh, what we found here is that uh, the AM2, so this is the um, amplification mechanism which uh, I have developed. So this is able to get the best deflections with the as well as the best uh, actual stroke. Um, now, when we inserted these uh, uh, investigation, uh, these these values, and then we get the vibration reduction as well as the flap uh, power is uh, reduced. So one in, uh, optimization after the optimization study, we found these uh, numbers, and these are the hub loads. So keeping all these contexts, so the whole theme is all right. Now we understand that what catastrophic havoc the the vibrations in particularly, let's say in, in when we are considering the rotary uh, wing machine, what ground resonance can do in real time in, in, a, in a, with a flick of fingers. Now the point is the there are many solutions, so we are focusing on the the active vibration control device that is the active trailing edge flap. So now. Uh, learning from the the experience uh, due from my PhD work, so the idea is the yes. So it is possible to reduce the aerodynamic loads in the uh, and cancel that in the uh, at the hub itself, but at the expense of huge amount of power, right? And it is more complex because uh, one of the key challenge what we get over here is that uh, still we are going to get a gap when we are going to actuate the trailing edge flap. So um, the Recently, let me uh, show you one small. Um, can you can you see this video? Yeah. Yeah. There's designed and built the first successful airplane. So this is the investigation done by Professor Sridhar Kota uh, in Michigan, and in 2014, the same investigations has been done, and um, with the full flight test by uh, on the uh, belly of one small uh, in-flight test airplane by the NASA, and it has been successfully demonstrated that the compliant mechanisms where there are no gaps in, like in the trailing edge flaps, which the whole literature is talking about. So this is the next leap which we have to go, and there, there are oxatic airfoils can help us. Let's look at it, what is the key advantage? Twisting the wings to control the aircraft. Soon after the inaugural flight, Curtis improved the original design with the introduction of hinged flaps, quickly adopted by all aircraft designers. Achieving seamless control surfaces rather than hinged flaps has been an elusive goal for decades. So this, these are actually, the, you see that there is no surface where the aerodynamic drag is going to increase. It is a complete smooth surface and it is all getting actuated using compliant mechanisms inherently in, in the airfoil. And uh, so the oxatic airfoils offers us that leverage, which we are going to talk in the next part of the presentation. Decades. Today, however, the aerodynamic efficiency goal has been achieved. Flexus pioneered the compliant design technology, enabling monolithic elastic structures to be strong, flexible, and seamless. The simplicity of jointless elastic structure developed by Flex using well-known aerospace grade materials and actuators, Flexus has integrated their technology within existing aircraft architecture. So uh, it has been, um, as I said, so it has been flight tested. Including fuel savings of 3 to 5 percent on a retrofit and 8 to 12 percent on a clean sheet build, along with significant noise reduction during takeoff and landing. Flexus technology has many other applications, such as variable geometry leading edge and hydrodynamic surfaces or fluid pump. So keeping this into the context, now we appreciate that the what is the level of deflection is required and what are the key challenges still after the trailing edge flap or any kind of an active control device which we are going to insert uh, as the literature says. So is there any other alternative? Yes. The other alternative is using leveraging the oxatic structures, which is based on negative Poisson ratio. And um, as I said, so uh, this is uh, the high TRL level technology. Already uh, organizations such as Airbus and a couple of other organizations are interested. I'm going to show you a couple of other investigation agencies which are working on it. So the big question comes that what's in it for me? So uh, certainly as reported, 
by different experimental investigations that it improves shear resistance, indentation resistance, the fracture resistance, and also certainly the SEA, the specific energy absorption. So this is the one of the main reason why the defense and the, any, any defense forces are interested. And in fact, there has been successful trials going on in the uh, ballistics research laboratories in India and, and globally to leverage the oxatic structures and uh, the oxatic metamaterial unit cells to create uh, different kind of the uh, anti-ballastic systems. So to begin with, uh, this is the same chart what we saw uh, as a name, uh, snapshot of the patent of the from the Airbus in 2016. So, and let me also take you that which are the other agencies who are interested in the same kind of investigation. So this I have directly taken it from the the European Space Agency and uh, the uh, equivalent agencies which are involved in one consortium of a project. And here I'm highlighting that the NASA, the Boeing, and certainly I said the earlier, I'm showing you the Airbus is interested in that and uh, the US Naval Research. So they all are investigating since uh, more than five years on the negative Poisson ratio to be used for different applications for the civilian uh, and certainly as well as for defense applications to begin with. So uh, now I'm going to quickly get into uh, uh, the most trickiest part of this investigation. There are many unit cells which are existing uh, in the literature. And in fact, now the whole research is going towards finding out the new unit cells. So Professor Ivans and uh, Professor Lakes, they were the, the pioneers who started with this work um, you know, in late 90s. But uh, still, with, now with the advent of the additive manufacturing technology, where we, it is possible to manufacture these products, right? whatever we want to uh, manifest in, in, in our products. So then now the, then the research has taken the next leaps and bounds. So here uh, in our research work, what we did, so we started with the, the most fundamental negative Poisson ratio exhibiting unit cell. This is famously known as a 2D re-entrant unit cell. So, and uh, this is uh, something traditional equivalent to the uh, Dumbru kind of a shape uh, in the Indian context. And if you, if you see that, if you change the angle and uh, pull the two sides out, you know, over here, then we get a hexagon type of a structure, which is uh, known to us since ages. But if we just change the angle, so the whole thing is with this angle that what should be the, the appropriate angle, which is going to leave, give us the properties so that we can leverage it for multiple applications. To begin with, it can be the negative Poisson ratio exhibiting oxatic airfoils. So here what you see, this is the, the matrix. Uh, these are the, the forces and these are the degrees of freedoms. And the, so we have put up the different boundary conditions and came up these. Uh, uh, these are the normalized, the in-plane moduli as well as the Poisson ratio in the mu xy as well as mu yx. Now, please uh, note here, these expressions are extremely sensitive. In particular, what we know from our reference literature generally from our UGPG or the, the conventional, like say, Timoshenko mechanics of material, we know that the, the Poisson ratio is, is a material property, and it in, indeed it is. But in this special case of geometries, for example, what we see right now at the top left corner is the 2D reentrant oxatic unit cell. Now, here you see mu xy is a function of theta, thickness, and the variables, the geometric variables such as L and uh, T and H and, and W, right? So now when we try to uh, plot these curves, then a very interesting phenomenon which is exhibited in experiments a lot. There are few naturally exhibiting materials as well, but we are interested in meta materials which we can create and tailor-made. Um, that's the very essence of the NMCAD itself. So 
here what we uh, are able to understand and investigate the mu x y and mu y x as we are sweeping the theta and uh, taking the h by l and t by l constant these values starts actually going the the poisson ratio started exhibiting negative property so that is the oxatic behavior in particular and uh, taking this into consideration when we uh, plugged these informations into our core of the airfoil and uh, put that into the and what we call as an oxatic airfoil we were able to demonstrate the oxatic behaviors as well as the the level of deflection what we want to achieve for morphing of wings or trailing edge deflection for helicopters that is achievable uh, let me show you uh, one small uh, demo of these uh, unit cells uh, is it i cannot see the screen uh, can you see this yes okay so uh, this is the uh, 2d oxatic reentrant unit cell and uh, this i have printed uh, so a couple of my students have printed and some of them i have printed i'm going to demonstrate and the same demonstration uh, i'm very pleased to share so uh, and thanks to professor dinesh always for inspiring so we have shown this to the uh, ambassadors to netherlands as well as to the russia uh, in 2022 december so uh, this is extremely stiff so because the t and the l uh, the h by l and the t by l they play a role for increasing the stiffness and if you just try to observe if it is visible i don't know please let me know if you are able to uh, observe it i'm putting a tensile load okay can you see what is happening in the lateral direction? Is it visible? No? Yes? No, not really. So, all right, let me show you something else. So, uh, what I have shown you is the 2D reentrant, and uh, there are myriad other applications, and uh, I'm very pleased to share our lab uh you know and uh, uh, along with the um, nmcad and professor dinesh so this is the uh, we are investigating other type of unit cells which are unconventional right and uh, on the screen you see different other applications but uh, let me take you to this journey now this is extremely so the properties are tailored such that the the oxatic behavior is quite evident now again this is a different type of a unit cell this is known as lozenges Right, what we saw earlier, this is known as the 2D reentrant unit cell. Okay, and this is the lozenges. And again, I'm going to put the tensile load. And uh, what generally we, we would expect what should happen in the lateral direction. So it should converge, right? In general, the conventional materials. So, so let's see when we, I'm going to put the tensile load. I hope this is visible. Yes. Yeah. So this is the brilliant demo, which actually I really love it. So this is what I call as a breathing mode. So when you are trying to put the tensile load in the, let's say in the X direction, in the Y direction, the lateral direction, it is also expanding. Unlike any kind of a, the UTM test uh, on a dog bone structure or like, where we are going to, when we put the tensile load, we expect that it should, uh, you know the the central part star, starts going uh, performing necking so so this is uh, quite con uh, uncontemporary and so with this idea we started working uh, with these kind of structures and uh, where, where we have the opportunity to tailor made its properties so how much stiffness we need uh, whatever density we need and look at the benefit what we are going to leverage from these why these defense forces are interested and the defense organizations is extremely light right and the 3d uh, additive manufacturing technology is available now and we can go with the 3d metal printing uh, uh, if it is required and certainly uh, the and uh, um, i met few people uh, during my last visit to bangalore um, there I, I met a company especially eos also and a couple of other organizations they are printing the composites and the carbon fibers as well so here what you see on the screen are mirrored applications of the oxatic unit cells different oxatic unit cells and at their different applications here what you see is is the, is the chiral structure 
right? And then we can have a tetrachiral, hexachiral, you know, and then entry, uh, anti tetrachiral and alike. So, and here, uh, this particular application is in the, uh, the kinesiology and for the biomedical application as well as for uh, rehabilitation. And this one uh, is very interesting application in the biomedical uh, science for oxatic uh, esophagus stents. And these are not only just meant for research, they are already in practice. So that's what really fascinates me. So it has its own applications in the different domains. So uh, I'm going to share some of the results from our uh, research group. And on the top, you see that uh, people uh, th these days, lots of hip uh, implants or knee implants are happening. And uh, so, and the, the companies such as Stryker and a couple of other organizations, they're extremely aggressively looking into the oxatic uh, hip replacement units because they are made of extremely expensive materials. Uh, oxenium is a, uh, you know, one of the trademark and the patented technology of uh, the nephew and Smith. So they are also looking into, uh, can we reduce the weight or the volume? So depending upon that, we can leverage the different unit cells under. In, so that's why we are not only, uh, you know, restraining ourselves to 2D uh, oxatic unit cells or for that matter for lozenges. So we are looking for double arrows and uh, many, many other applications as uh, you know, tetrachiral and alike. And by the way, uh, it is an, uh, these structures are extremely useful in the automotive sector because uh, the 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 chassis of an automobile, uh, whenever it has to go to the impact test, over there we need extraordinary specific energy absorption. That's how we get, you know, the occupants must be safe. So and certainly it has this application in the aerospace, but it has its other applications as well as in the civil industry, in the mechanical industry. And uh, least to say, I mean, uh, oh, I'm going to present the results from the oxatic airfoil. So is there any questions till now? OK. Yes, please. Uh, are you audible? Uh, I am audible. I mean, uh, can you speak a little louder? Uh, or you can come to near to the mic, please. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just I uh, want to curiosity for me. Uh, yeah. Actually, whatever you saw in one video, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, that one a uh, skating material we are using on the trailing edge of that uh, blade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we uh, implement the same on helicopter point of view? in blade oh certainly why not why not i mean uh, uh, that is so yeah, what you could also uh, rajneesh uh, the questioner is uh, an engineer from hal helicopters division i think uh, ram kaushik uh, he probably can't see you with the cameras here i'm not able to so, see okay uh, i i yeah. definitely see, okay hi we meet hi. Abhiyar also oh yes hi kaushik uh, glad to hi, hi. to see you again glad to meet you Sure. I mean, definitely we can we can use. In fact, uh, there is a huge amount of research going on because what we see today, we see it as an airfoil. So, for example, in um, the uh, different airfoils in the helicopter in the HEL when we when we met last time. So, uh, uh, you know, we were discussing earlier with the Professor Dinesh as well. So to so when we cut the cross section, what we see an airfoil. So and uh, in particular, what I showed that that's why I deliberately showed some of the results from my own PhD and postdoc research, because uh, we need to appreciate that we uh, take an airfoil and we can deflect that airfoil using active trailing edge flap or the you know active vibration control technologies. But now when we put that as a complete compliant monolithic structure, that is going to have the the whole new next generation airfoils um, and certainly the, it needs to go under a lot of investigation a lot of investigation we have experimentalists sitting in front of us so we need to do a lot of investigations right so because centrifugal loads uh, in the rotorcraft are massive in comparison to the fixed wings but uh, if i have to say the least yes it has the potential and uh, there are investigations going on already I'm requesting to uh, maybe the 
whoever is working in this uh, skating material point of view. So may do the blade also uh, we can explore in the future coming because oh, uh, sure. we have that uh, limited light and some constraints are we have that sure. um, uh, may do the blade. Is. So that point of view we, we can implement maybe future is good for a rotary industry. Certainly, I mean, uh, so just next to you on your left side is the uh, the immediate, uh, the whole point point of con Professor Dinesh. So we, we can start and we can explore that need. Uh, definitely, yes. All right. So any other question or uh, shall I move? We can get going. OK. All right. Thanks a lot. So. So with this as an inspiration, uh, you know, uh, we started working uh, in the oxatic airfoil structures and um, I'm very pleased to share. I believe Navdeep must be here in this talk as well. So uh, Mr. Navdeep Malik, so he's a BTEC fourth year student and uh, out of a lean and agile manufacturing course, which is an elective course I get got an opportunity to teach here. So we started working on this particular problem and then the results are uh, really uh, extremely pleasing and positive. So I'm going to share that as well. So here what you see is the work uh, where we, uh, there is a reference paper by Hugh and Kim, 2013, uh, a quite seminal paper as well as from Spudini. So, but this one is the work done by Hugh and Kim and a couple of other researchers. So what you see now, that whole same 2D oxatic unit cell, 2D re-entrant unit cell, we have put that into the core of the airfoil, right? So it's a complete monolithic structure. There are no aerodynamic drag insertions. So the flow is going to be attached always. So there is no flow separation, right? Now at the bottom right, what you see is the small uh, part of that same core. And uh, when we are applying a certain tensile force, what I shown you uh, here, you see is uh, all those uh, kind of uh, different breathing modes. What we were, what I was referring to, where we have applied a 150 Newton of a tensile load uh, in the X direction and uh, tried to investigate that what is happening in the Y direction. And obviously, uh, what we were able to see was the uh, beautiful uh, demonstration of the oxatic uh, phenomena. And uh, here we have uh, measured that phenomena um, and were able to see that the negative Poisson ratio is of the order of, I'm sorry, uh, minus 0 0.7. So we have taken this uh, negative Poisson ratio structure and uh, this is the snapshot from the paper which uh, Navdeep referred. And then uh, we started working and trying to replicate those results and then further take it to the next level. And uh, the modeling of this uh, has been done in uh, uh, using the 2D reentrant oxatic airfoil. This one is the tetra entry chiral, uh, you know, unit cell. So, but we want to stick with these, uh, the fundamental one and then slowly graduate. So here what you see is the, uh, the, uh, the snapshots of the CAD model of the airfoil with the, uh, or the precisely the oxatic airfoil. And uh, these are the different properties of the GFRP and the analysis has been done. And then here you see the, uh, I'm very glad to, glad to share and thanks to Professor Dinesh and congratulations to uh, Navdeep and uh, the whole NMCAD. So, so we won the best uh, student award. So uh, the Navdeep uh, has done this work and uh, I'm going to show you the, the demo of this. Can you see this airfoil? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so, so this is the, the, the highly cambered Appler 420 airfoil, and uh, what you see is the 2D uh, re-entrant unit cell. What we saw earlier, and thus, and then the demo of that with the you know with the less stiffened lozenges. Here we have put that into the core, and then what you you see, I mean, what we are going to get is. So I'm not going to apply the I'm not able to apply the right forces. Otherwise, without changing the too much of the the profile. I'm going to get the desired trailing edge flap deflections. So we can tailor made these particular stiffness of these core as we saw earlier in the demonstration. And then with the the whole idea is that with the advent of uh, the 3D printing technology, we can construct the airfoils as desired and tailor made them 
uh, exhibiting the negative Poisson ratio properties and then insert this idea into the trailing edge flap deflections or the wing morphing. We can tailor made that it can be active twist. It can be for the rotors as well. The ATR is one of the investigation area uh, always and uh, which researchers have done it. But the trailing edge flaps has found to be the, the much better because it reduces huge amount of power consumption. So, uh, so this is the work which we have demonstrated and shown and um, so Nadeep uh, got the best paper award and uh, in this happened in December 2022. So um, let me quickly go into the other opportunities. So it is not only the oxatics um, has been investigated and our research group is investigating in the airfoils, but uh, there has been a tremendous opportunity of this uh, you know, research area in um, other spin off uh, domains. So one of the uh, key area now, if I wear the uh, technology leadership uh, hat, look at the case, look at the opportunity, the business case. 422 million people, right? 422 million people. So they are worldwide affected by the diabetes mellitus 2, uh, normally known as the you know diabetes or sugar. So. This is the 2021 data and it keeps on increasing uh, like the, the power law. So now what happens is we uh, started investigating this work, uh, taking the inspiration from um, this the, the paper mentioned over here. And then let me take you to that work quickly. So this is the small uh, overview uh, from the students work. So. So what happens is these uh, diabetes mellitus 2 patients, they get this particular part of their heel extremely weak. In fact, my mother had this problem, so I, I got extremely interested in this work because uh, uh, the, the, they are not able to walk, right? Uh, so as the diabetes uh, mellitus 2 keeps on, uh, you know, prolonging with you, uh, for your life. So what happens is this uh, later, the the last part just below, below the heel, it starts depleting and it's become extremely painful to walk. Uh, that's why sometimes people offer these uh, special kind of uh, footwear as well for diabetes mellitus 2 patients. So, but the point is it, it's, a, it's a clear business case that the lifespan of these uh, products are uh, extremely shallow. At the same time, these uh, products are not, uh, you know, uh, are they are not affordable by everybody. And when we are talking about 422 million people, is there any better solution where we can have less pressure, less loads using the oxatic, uh, you know, negative Poisson ratio, leveraging this particular phenomena? So what we did uh, with this particular biological problem. So we started investigating, can we solve it mechanically? Is there any solution for that? So what we found uh, from this uh, research work that yes. So if we take, let's say again, in this scenario, what we are considering is the 2D tree and trench unit cell, right? Um, in fact, uh, uh, here again, the, the angle is the, is the most key critical parameter as I showed you earlier as well from the analytical results. So this uh, angle in this case is the 80 degrees. Now with that, um, so if you can see this particular part, can you see uh, what I'm holding in my hand? Yes, so this is the heel pad, right? 3D printed heel pad and the inner part of this is the, the same. If we cut the cross section, so this is the, the 2D re-entrant unit cells. So what we found when we uh, you know, try to put the same type of a surface pressure loading which a human uh, presses on the heel, then we uh, can really release a huge amount of uh, uh, loads and uh, get a cushioning effect, unlike the normal footwear which is available. And uh, it has, as I said, it has a very shallow life and uh, still it has a detrimental effects. So here what we obtain is the negative Poisson ratio of the order of minus 0.9. And um, as I said again, uh, so it can be tailor-made depending upon uh, what is the key requirement 
and uh, again leveraging the 3D printing technology. In fact, uh, this is not uh, only uh, still at the research phase. Uh, in last year, Adidas CTO, uh, Chief Technology Officer, have made a statement and they have launched a product uh, which is basically the sole of the shoes is an auxatic 3D printed polymer uh, you know, sole. It has more shelf life and it is an, uh, after the sports science investigations, they have found that uh, in the this particular product, which they have just launched, uh, you know, a couple of years back, one or two years back, is that the the level of uh, impact, which when we are trying to land on the uh, our feet on the ground, is extremely less, and and the level of the cost of those uh, you know particular footwear is of the order of twenty two thousand Indian rupees one pair of shoes, and and similar other uh, companies have started investigating, so. And this is a small uh, you know, spin-off idea which I also wanted to share with the audience. So the other one uh, which is of prime interest from a defense perspective uh, to the aerospace audience or the, you know, the aerospace as well as the defense forces is the specific energy absorption capability of the auxatic structures. So here I'm showing you one snapshot. So this is the work um, uh, which we are trying to investigate. So this, uh, not the work has been done. But this is the one other promising area of research which needs a high level of focus globally by all the research fraternity because this saves human lives, especially precious soldiers' lives, right? So any other question till now? Because I'm going to switch on to the other areas, the fourth part of the presentation. Hello, sir. My name is Hirsch. I am a final year aeronautical graduate student. Yes, please. Uh, Hi, considering, Hirsch. considering your expertise, my question might sound a little naive here. Uh, I just wanted to know about the uh, the structure that you are using for your FOL. So, how is the fracture mechanics there? I mean, if we introduce a crack within, so how will it how will it respond to it? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we have not investigated that uh, in particular. Uh, but there is one research paper where uh, what they have done is they have deliberately, uh, you know, inserted the pseudo cracks, what you can say so. But again, for the benefit of increasing the trailing edge flap deflections, so that to tailor made the stiffness of the the system, right? So uh, in this particular part of the research, so the the fracture analysis has not been done. So I'll be honest on that. Thank you. Yeah. So if you want, I can share that article with you. I mean, uh, you can you can look into that. So that is a tailor-made part of the uh, the stiffness properties in the auxatic airfoils, in particular with the uh, tetrachiral uh, unit cells. Yeah, yeah. That would be sure. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. So so now I I would like to quickly. Uh, so professor, how much time I have, sir? Um, I think we need to wind up as soon as possible. So all right, all right, I'll do that quickly. How much time do you think you? Uh, I, I'll. Uh, so this is not related to immediately to auxatic, uh, auxatic. So if you want, I can skip. Otherwise, I can skim through quickly. Yeah, you can skim through it. Yeah, sure. So uh, this might be of interest to the students and uh, uh, maybe to professors as well. Uh, so this is the other kind of work which is uh, we are investigating. And in fact, uh, it has its own uh, uh, very key relation with the development of new auxatic negative Poisson ratio structures. So how we are going to find out the new structures? So one approach is using generative design. But in this work, uh, I'm going to quickly show you, uh, and this is the area which McKinsey itself is uh, you know, uh, highlighting, and we are going to get huge amount of saving on weight as well as on the, on the cost, right? And uh, this is the uh, the piston which uh, Porsche have investigated uh, for their machines. So this particular last part, although it, it is the, the critical component of the, the heart of the automobile. So uh, last year when we were there in the conference, uh, so which was sponsored by Boeing and Boeing people were also there. So this is the directly the part from the Boeing. So they were showing their uh, work 
uh, that how they are collaborating and uh, they are interested in the generative design based uh, you know, components for because they want to achieve the weight reduction. And um, on 6th of October 2022, I've attended one lecture by Ryan. Uh, so NASA is investigating that in particular as well as GM. So here, this is the complete summary of uh, the GE General Electric Bracket Challenge. Uh, so this is the original bracket and this one is, were the final brackets which were designed by the students. Um, and here we got the weight reduction of the order of 49%. And look at uh, the, the cost reduction is uh, 3%. And when we scale these numbers, and these are not my numbers, this is, these are given by the uh, official, uh, you know, the, the published article by General Electric. So this boils down to the $9.5 million per year. And certainly need not to say it, it is as part of the, the Clean Sky projects and I like it and because it, uh, you know, substantiate that. So the other part of the work uh, which is going on that is on the Bayesian data analytics and the Gaussian processes. So I'll, I'll just skip this part. So uh, this is my own work, uh, which we are investigating uh, in further for the uh, NASA PHM prognostics uh, health management uh, data challenge. And uh, this is the, uh, these are the engine data points. So we are trying to predict uh, the remaining useful life, which is left for the jet engine. So here comes the, uh, this is the very sh uh, sharp and quick run through. And this is the bonus part for everybody. So uh, Rolls Royce is organizing a conference uh, in Bangalore and uh, you all are uh, uh, invited. And in fact, this is an opportunity for all the students to apply to this uh, meeting and conference. Please note the dates, the last submission entry uh, that is just for an abstract is 24th of March, 2023. So still we have almost a week left and uh, I'll be, uh, I'm on the jury panel as well as, well as on the uh, other panelists. So I'll be happy to, uh, you know, support and uh, look in, look forward to see you there. So with this, I'll uh, uh, put hold to the presentation. Thanks a lot, Professor, again, and uh, the whole August audience and the professors from Delft. So to listen and to, I would like to have your feedback as well as any kind of questions. So thank you for uh, the work. The presentation is a really interesting topic, and uh, I don't know if you were here on Monday. I presented uh, a different concept, but for uh, marketing applications. So I think I uh, saw your full presentation um, online. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. That was wonderful. Thanks. So this is a different approach to obtain uh, similar uh, marketing structures, but a different, completely different approach, and uh, really interesting. Uh, no, it's more than a question, it's a little, little bit of curiosity or a comment. So because you are working on uh, artificial intelligence as well, so uh, are you planning to optimize uh, the structures of your uh, 3D, now 3D printing uh, airfoil using the artificial intelligence? Uh, indeed, uh, that is the work which is going on. So very soon, uh, I'm going to share that results uh, maybe to Professor, and we can we can work together if you're interested, Professor. So uh, so we are uh, going to use so one of the research work which um, I uh, developed, uh, you know, and published uh, that is on the stochastic, uh, uh, you know, evolutionary algorithms, uh, which are highly interpretable, by the way, because one of the key things which I learned from my industrial experience is that. Um, the, the results which we are going to buy in the industry, which see the light of the sun, it must be explainable and interpretable. So, so from that perspective, so we have developed the response surface methods um, and uh, one new matrix itself, and that is already published. So to create a DOE, so that part is also there. And uh, certainly now we are putting a layer of the optimization using the artificial intelligence uh, tools and the probabilistic machine learning, so which I just quickly skimmed through. That is the Gaussian process-based uh, regression techniques. Extremely highly interpretable, extremely powerful, and they gave the uncertainty on the, the, the probabilities on the uncertainties itself using the Bayes theorem. Extremely powerful. So we are working on it and uh, very soon, uh, and we I'm very pleased to share. So 
Um, uh, so I just shared with Professor earlier, uh, with Professor Dinesh. So uh, um, our so I got a project from the government of India that is on the mathematical applied mathematicians got that uh, generally apply to these projects. So uh, being an engineer, so it was a very tough call to get into these applied mathematicians. So government of India, the departments of science and technology have uh, uh, gave, gave me a grant for three years to work on the uh, CMAPS NASA data uh, and then uh, create a remaining useful life prognostics based on probabilistic machine learning, especially in particular my interest is the, uh, the uh, Gaussian process regressors. Yeah. Congratulations for the grant, and uh, yes, I would be really interested to know more of this work you are carrying out. Sure, Professor. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Rajneesh. Uh, every time I hear you, uh, if there is no new award or new grant, uh, it's a surprise for me. So uh, the thank kind you, of breadth of work that you do uh, is always an inspiration right from your student days here when you were a student leader of uh, many teams which went on to win quite a few awards. Uh, you've been an inspiration to your teammates as well as uh, other students. So uh, continue the excellent work uh, uh, with your hat tricks because uh, <laughs> you keep changing your hats uh, so frequently and I think that really helps to switch on and switch off uh, to the different mode and still carry over uh, what can inspire from the previous hacks. We all are just reflection of yours, Professor. So thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. So if there is no other question, so shall I disconnect? Uh, yeah, because we have a different link for the next talk, so we will uh, leave this link. Thank sure. you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.